Metaverse, the tech buzzword of the past few months. The virtual world is supposed to offer unlimited opportunities for fun, games and work. The tech sector has invested huge amounts of cash into the Metaverse. But what has actually happened to the original dream of a virtual universe? Apart from Meta's Horizon Worlds, others are also working on making the vision of a metaverse a reality, such as Roblox, The Sandbox and Decentraland, for example. Mark Zuckerberg has invested billions into his metaverse idea, but will it pay off? An all-encompassing metaverse, like in the science fiction novel Snow Crash, does not exist yet. Instead, there are more than 100 virtual worlds, it's unclear which will come out on top, but we can already see what people like doing and spending money on in a metaverse. Virtual music events are popular. Ariana Grande, Snoop Dogg and others have attracted more than 60 million fans to the metaverse, but there's often no charge for the tickets. Virtual real estate trading, on the other hand, is a major source of income in the metaverse. There have already been sales of nearly 470 million euros for virtual houses and land. The total value of all VR goods is currently more than triple that at around 1.5 billion euros. Virtual dating is yet to take off, but Forbes magazine predicts the number of VR dating apps will grow. One example is US startup Planet Theta. Hello, Chris, my virtual date. Lovely to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. We've set up a, a number of places to be able to either organically meet new people or through our micro dating, which is right over here to your left the, uh, in the VIP area. It's like a quick kind of speed date. And if it goes well, then they can go on to a coffee date that's a little bit longer. Virtual sports and fitness programs will be a big part of VR and the metaverse, say industry experts. Working out immersed in a completely different world, around a fifth of potential VR hardware customers in the US say that's more appealing than any other VR application. The front runners, though, are still the VR multiplayer games like Fortnite and the Roblox gaming platform. They generate billions in revenue. Roblox allows users to create their own virtual environments and games that other users can play themselves. Every day, up to 58 million gamers are active at the same time on Roblox servers alone. Yet the project, created back in 2006, hasn't made any profit so far. So the metaverse is still in a very early stage in terms of development. A big part of what at least I see on the metaverse right now is focused around um, getting attraction from investors. So it's all about getting to that next stage, getting development a bit further. And currently we're not at a stage where the metaverse is anywhere near ready yet to bring on and find appealing um, offers to consumers or to businesses really that can help driving the metaverse forward. Outside the gaming industry, there are other issues with the metaverse, even if big companies like Meta or Microsoft promise otherwise. The promises were huge, especially regarding the graphics. Pre-produced trailers, shown at Meta's annual keynotes, for example, raised high expectations. But in reality, Meta's main app, Horizon Worlds, is a bit of a letdown. Torsos without legs, jerky animation, and virtual worlds that are often deserted. These issues also play competitors like VR Chat. Enter one of these virtual worlds to hang out with the fantasy avatars and you might find the interaction a little strange. Baby sis, how you been? Are you all right? Is everything Hi, okay? Brother. Anybody that's that's It's not beautiful. quite the revolution of social interaction that was promised, not yet anyway. Many of these social VR worlds are also not seeing the user numbers they'd hoped for. According to the Wall Street Journal, Meta's Horizon Worlds were visited by only 200,000 active users in October 2022, far from the initial 500,000 target for the end of the year. An alternative to Metaverse is Decentraland. Overseen by a nonprofit foundation, it's a decentralized world where users can buy virtual land as NFTs. The graphics are more evolved than in Meta's Horizon Worlds. The avatars even have legs. 
But it's also a lonely world. The website DCL Metrics measures around 8,000 visitors a day. The question is, what kind of metaverse do we actually want? One where we can experience everything from music festivals to dates and business lunches, or could a metaverse like VR Chat, which has one clear focus, come out on top? Because what exactly is Meta's Horizon World's unique selling point? Without that, it could be difficult for Zuckerberg's dream to take off. Former Meta advisors have voiced their scepticism, such as video game developer legend John Carmack. In his speech at the 2022 Meta Connect conference, Carmack said instead of programming an entire virtual universe, the metaverse should emerge from an existing popular game or app. He compared this to his development of the first-person shooter games Doom and Quake in the 1990s, which created technology that was later used for the game Valorant. For many, Mark Zuckerberg's Horizon Worlds just isn't developed enough yet. Some people are sceptical that one single company can create a successful worldwide metaverse, myself included. And Meta's stock value has plummeted. But the idea of a metaverse is still appealing for many investors. Analysts predict the sector could reach a value of 750 billion euros by 2024. Central America also wants to jump on board, but it's risky and difficult to make money with a metaverse, as our next example from Guatemala shows. Virtual houses, UFOs, and Mayan pyramids. It's all for sale in Plotsi land. This metaverse project was founded by the Guatemalan real estate investment fund Portafolio Diversicado. Each virtual property or Plotsi costs 500 US dollars. Plotsiland sold 3,000 of them. It was one of the first metaverses in Latin America. There are now lots of projects, but they're not that popular. Most of them work with metaverses with an NFT economy, like Chiguriland, Wakalandia and Beerbot. And each one gives it a style, a different user experience. Ownership of the Platzis is established by a unique NFT certificate, a non-fungible token that can't be copied, substituted, or subdivided. NFTs are recorded in a blockchain to certify authenticity and ownership. They can be sold and traded. Platziland founders promised their investors a return of 8% in the first year. But OpenSea, the biggest NFT market that hosted Platziland, removed the digital collection from its servers, triggering a panic. On Instagram, Plotsiland founder Rodrigo Blanco has asked owners to remain calm and says their properties are safe in the NFT wallets. The most important thing is to know which blockchain your wallet is in. Because there are blockchains that just stop working, no matter how secure or decentralized they are. OpenSea is a platform that doesn't really offer security. It doesn't have the decentralization that is needed in the world of blockchain and crypto. We have to be sure that no one can get into our wallets. Many metaverse platforms have their own economic system based on NFTs and blockchains. This is how they're hoping to attract investors and generate revenue. So when we talk about NFTs and, and blockchain, I in a sense think they provide an example of the technology and the angle that's needed to really take the metaverse to the next step. The other question is also, are NFTs and blockchain a mass market focused tool? The terms blockchain and NFTs together with cryptocurrency are almost scary words because they're associated with technological development, but they're also associated with high risk. There aren't just problems with the use of NFTs, which form the backbone of economic systems in the metaverse. A lot needs to also improve in terms of user friendliness and immersion before the metaverse can really get going. All metaverse worlds have one thing in common. No matter how well developed the visual experience, you don't feel anything, which stops users from being fully immersed. So there are a number of outstanding challenges. Uh, first and foremost is, is haptics. And that, that is, a, is a fundamental sort of issue because the way that we uh, interact with the real world is, is driven 
by sort of a uh, sort of a sensory motor uh, system. So we, we are actively uh, gathering sort of uh, information from the world around us through interactions. And that, that is the key thing uh, for VR to work on. Haptic jackets enable sensation in VR. Users can feel hugs, heat, and even pain. The sense of touch is vital for a realistic experience. This is also challenging for the design. If you're using a virtual laptop, you should be able to feel the keyboard. So-called tracking systems can map objects and transmit them as virtual objects or avatars. We have a few solutions now of bringing a virtual keyboard into virtual reality and then mapping it over your real-life keyboard. So when you see your virtual hands on a virtual keyboard, they're one for one with your real-life hands on your real keyboard. This also means that laptop and phone screens need to be visible in the metaverse. Here, virtual reality comes in handy. You can create multiple monitors, and so instead of having one screen to work on, you can have five screens to work on. So if you're someone who has a lot of tabs open or applications, you can spread that out nicely however you want. In virtual business conferences, users want to look the part and like themselves. London-based startup Lumarithmic is working to create realistic avatars. We believe in the metaverse there will be many gaming and non-serious applications where you can get away with the non-realistic avatar. But the tomorrow's metaverse will really also be about serious work, where you really need to project your real self and not, not your cartoon self. These hyper-realistic avatars are created using artificial intelligence and 3D scans. They could encourage users to try out more serious applications in the metaverse. Even more important than haptics and avatars is connectivity. Future virtual worlds need to be linked to one another to avoid having to sign in or create new avatars every single time. This way, the dream of a truly digital universe can become reality. How much potential do you see in the idea of a metaverse? And what could it be used for? Let us know. Bye for now and see you next time.